Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for to make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Elderly peasant entered a luxurious bank claiming to be the owner. Everyone laughed at him, but then this happened. Life in the country is not easy for most. An example of this was Andre and his large family, made up of his wife and his nine children. They had to work the land for as long as they could remember, and although it rewarded their work with good and sweet fruits, selling them to survive had always been a tough test. They kept their farm by sheer force of will, as the banks that had lent them the money to continue cultivating smothered them daily with large fees that took most of the profits they made per month selling their products. And Andre, desperate, spent long periods of time depressed, not knowing what to do, watching his children grow up without everything he needed and his wife tear her back from him from sunrise to sunset for such a small reward. But Andre had faith that one day things would change and the situation would improve. So he always got up again to continue working, waiting for the day when luck would smile on him and they could finally get out of this precarious situation. This is how life passed, day by day, among plants and animals. Once a month, the residents of the village met to discuss the news of the last days. Always, without exception, some of the peasants complained about the cruelty that the banking entities were with the small and medium agricultural producers and how difficult it was to continue harvesting to feed a country that seemed not to realize that their subsistence depended upon what they produced in the field. Therefore, when the discontent grew more and more, they began to hear winds of protest, but these were always easily silenced and things in the field remained the same. In the last 30 years of fighting and asking the government for more opportunities, they'd achieved nothing. It was for this reason that all of Andre's children grew up with the idea of finally changing things and improving the situation for the peasants. But they knew from the experience of their ancestors that trying to negotiate with the government was always a waste of time. Those in power only responded to the powerful, including the banks. For this reason, Fernando, the eldest son, had that idea in mind from the age of 14 and tried to convince his brothers to follow him in the cause. He didn't know yet how, but somehow they would one day found a bank and that bank would be all the ones his peasant neighbors had always wanted, a place where they'll support them without trying to absorb all their profits. Fernando and his brothers, the first thing they did was name the bank, and they drew rudimentary plans on how the bank that they founded should be like. And although over the years his ideal bank changed its name and shape several times, its essence never changed. It was to be an institution for peasants and for the countryside and within its gates the humiliation that cultivators of the earth always used to be subjected would never be allowed. However, one day Fernando saw himself already 46 years old, and without having achieved the dream that he had proposed since he was 14 along with his brothers. Some of them had left the field and had forgotten their youthful ideals. Others had resigned themselves to the fact that something like this would never happen, and simply stopped thinking about it. And in the end, Fernando only had the support of his only sister, the youngest in the house. Ariana was just 28 years old and all the freshness and idealism of youth. Between the two of them, they'd saved a considerable sum of money throughout their lives. But they were still a long way from having enough to start a bank, and they knew they were going to need some kind of help to achieve what they wanted. And they held fast to God, praying every day for a miracle. They knew that they should not ask for money because their own parents had taught them that God should not be asked for material things, much less a sum as large as they needed. But Fernando and Ariana knew that if God saw the nobility of their intentions and that the money would eventually be invested in improving the quality of life of hundreds of farmers, he would listen to them. It was like this that one day, after a long wait, the miracle that they had hoped for so long happened. Very early one morning, Fernando, Ariana, and their parents, who were the only ones still living in the fields, went out as usual to work the land. What would be their surprise when they heard a thud under their hoe? They'd found a trunk that had been buried deep, who knows how long. Astonishment lit their faces. When they opened it, they found jewelry, gold, and other valuables littering that trunk. 
Then Fernando and Ariana knew that God had heard their prayers. Finally, they had enough resources to begin to fulfill their dream and help as many farmers as they could. And their parents, witnesses to that discovery, did not interpose. Three years later, the dream finally materialized. Ariana became the young manager, who at 33 years old and without university studies, led the bank for several years with the greatest love and attachment to the ideals that had been forged with her brother. Fernando, meanwhile, was content to stop by the place from time to time to talk to Ariana, even though the bank was officially his. But he never liked administrative matters and fully trusted his sister. When she, 35 years later, could no longer continue running the bank due to health problems, it was when things turned for the worse. Fernando was already an old man of 87 years and could not go to the place so frequently. In the last six years, he'd only been there twice and for a very short time, and practically only met the new manager that Ariana had left in charge. The bank was a family secret. None of his friends and neighbors, not even those closest to him, ever knew that this place was theirs, but they were constantly grateful for the help that the entity had given them, and they had never tired of repeating it. However, some time later, the rumors changed, and Fernando began to hear how his neighbors complained about the bank that had been so good for so many years, and now it had been like the others, where they were treated badly for the simple fact of being humble. Then, Fernando, after talking with his sister, decided to pay a visit to the place. What would be his surprise when, trying to enter, the guard told him he did not give alms there, and when he told them that he was coming to carry out a bank transaction and they let him pass, he found himself inside with looks of disgust and displeasure from the officials who repeated him that they did not give alms, and that he left the place immediately. Even the manager saw him and told him, Go beg for the pension. The mockery and humiliation did not take long when Fernando told everyone that he was not going anywhere, since he was the owner of the bank. It took several minutes of laughter and pointing before the administrator left his office to see what was happening. When he saw Fernando, he immediately ordered him to follow, and without saying anything, he looked at all of them with deep anger. He entered the office with him. They talked for a long time and finally reached an agreement. Fernando would give him the opportunity to continue his position, but he had to undergo a complete staff turnover. And of course, neither he nor the new employees should ever again forget what the real reason for this bank was. Be the ally of the peasants. So Fernando and Ariana could calmly enjoy his old age, knowing that his legacy was now in good hands. Helping others is a central part of humanity. It brings people together and allows them to support one another. The stories of those who support others in times of crisis, such as helping the country recover from natural disasters and terrorist attacks, are inspiring. From the police officers who protect our communities, to the firefighters who rush into burning buildings, to the service men and women who sacrifice their life for the greater good, some men and women dedicate their lives to helping others. But assisting others isn't limited to grand gestures or difficult times. Helping others is something that can be achieved on a daily basis. Moreover, contrary to popular belief, assisting others does not always have to be a selfless act. It's important to realize that helping others will potentially benefit you. Whatever your inspiration, getting out and helping others is important. When you assist another individual, they're more likely to assist you. This is the unspoken agreement that drives almost every action. I'll be lugging boxes for the rest of the day, so you owe me. When somebody thinks you do the same for them, it's a lot easier to get help. They don't always keep their end of the bargain, and neither will you. However, if you support enough people and do enough good deeds, it will be returned to you when you need it. The concept of karma is often portrayed in a negative light. If you do something wrong, bad will find you. It even works the other way around. Positive things tend to happen when you're a good person and support others. Even if you don't believe, in an interconnected world that rewards good deeds, there's something to be said about how helping others alters the outlook. You'll always feel better about yourself when you support others, raising the probability that the next encounter will be positive rather than negative. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.